Okay, I'm making another series. So uh, there's things that uh, people would get divorced over that God showed me some stuff. Uh, I saw like a vision, not in my with my eyes, and I'm driving down the road in Tulsa, and I saw in my mind's eye, like in like a vision of my understanding vision of something coming out in front of the vehicle. I'm like looking, what, being apprehensive. You know, oh boy, what's supposed to happen? Nothing happened. I go home and I'm sitting there in the trailer and all of a sudden I'm like, well, I need to go down to Fred Myers and get something at the grocery store. I get out in my vehicle and I start going down the highway and I see a dog on the side of the road sniffing something and something reminds me of the vision that I just had, a precognitive vision. Uh, and and uh, so... I got one foot covering the brakes and the other one accelerating and I see a van or something coming in my rear view coming up the middle, next lane over going pretty fast and I see that dog all of a sudden come out in the lane and so I hit my brakes and plunged my vehicle so it was real obvious that I was like Rrr! and so that because I did that the van hit its brakes and was skidding and then he, he hit the dog but it didn't get hurt because it ran off yeah, yeah. because uh, God showed me the vision for multiple reasons. One is to show me to pay attention because you can change outcomes. Uh, uh, you know, uh, seeing something and dreaming something and whatever is not a determining what's going to happen. But can show you uh, not just what's happened, but also it's that you can change outcomes if you learn this stuff properly. And so I go home and my wife and I were talking about something. And that's what happened uh, to help save our marriage is she's confessed some things to me. And so I'm praying for her. I stayed up all night in prayer because we were getting ready. Well, let me back up a little, little bit because I was at working at this place called uh, Titan Motorcycle Company of America, assembling motorcycles. And I was supposed to go. I'd been given special favor at the last week of the, 1999 to go take my two-week vacation and I was going to go out in the desert in case the millennium messed everything up. I wouldn't have to worry about being in town. And and uh, so I was set up to have the last week of 99 and the first week of 2000 off. And and I'm sitting there in the bathroom just like when, when I was you know a kid praying to God and asking him, are you real? Here I'm praying to God, talking about stuff, and God showed me God spoke to me and said, you're not going on vacation, you're going to Texas. And so I tell them at the office, I said, well, I'm not going on vacation, I'm going to Texas. And they're like, what? How did this come about? And I'm like, mm, I don't know how to explain all that. So I'm just like, I'm going to Texas. So um, that was a powerful thing. And so we had some time before we left Phoenix to go to Texas because what I promised my wife in Oklahoma that come with me when I'm done with going to Motorcycle Mechanic Institute, we'll go to Texas. You know, that's where she was from, and she didn't want to come to Oklahoma. She was visiting her sister where we got married, where we met, and she didn't want to come to Texas where I went to go to go to school. But she agreed to come with me if we went to Texas when I was done. So the Holy Spirit said, you're not going on vacation, you're going to Texas, and reminded me of that promise. So we're getting ready to go to Texas getting stuff ready and so and we started visiting churches where we never went to before we left and and uh everywhere we went someone was given a word that she was going to die prophesying about things and events in her life that she was going through and so i was up all night praying for her praying for god to give her extend extend her days and have mercy on her because i'd learned through things like Moses and stuff that you can appeal unto God. And there's things in the Bible that te taught us how to appeal for God to change judgments. And and, and uh, so that's what I did. And, and I was up all night. And while I was up all night praying, at one point it was like a conduit came down around me. And I stood in, the, in heaven, in this physical body. I was standing in heaven and beholding heaven and seeing heaven and understanding heavenly knowledge. And 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 uh, something like that happened to me back in '82, which was different when I saw a window of heaven, and I wasn't as sanctified at that time in my life. So I had a horrible 
the physical sense. You know, I, I could talk about that, but here at this time in 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 uh, in ninety nine, I saw this heaven. I was in, standing in heaven in this body, and then then it lifted, and, and all I could do is walk around for quite a while in the trailer, just saying, "I never knew that. I never knew that." I go to work, and what I normally took about two or three days to do in the service department preparing new builds uh, to be ready for shipping uh, I was doing in just a couple of hours and they'd put some top people on it double check my work because I'm saying you know give me another one next and and, and uh, everything was perfect and flawless that was the anointing and power that God put on me that day because of having heaven come down around upon me I mean it, it's so powerful things that you can experience of God there's nothing impossible for them to believe and, and seeing things of the Lord I'll just go back to 82 I mentioned it that in 1982 when I was dedicated freshly to follow the Lord um, after you know saying yes when he said follow me and I was working at Omni and, and uh, doing construction and reading the Bible all the time and I, I quit smoking quit getting drunk and quit taking drugs and I was staying holy in our relationship I wasn't having sex anymore because we weren't married and 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 me and the girl that I was with at that time we weren't married uh, I tried to get her to marry but she wouldn't marry me anyhow uh, so I was staying holy and I'm laying there in the bed her and some other friends were out in the living room and they were doing something out there like weighing out drugs or something but I don't remember exactly what they were doing but I'm laying there and I'm examining myself and I'm saying, Lord, you said in your word that blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. And I said, I've examined myself and I believe that I'm pure in heart. And I said, I want to see you. This is back in 1982. And, and uh, I didn't see God, but what I saw was what God allowed me to see at that time. It was like the ceiling opened up like a window. So I just call it the window of heaven. The Bible talks about a window of heaven, but it's different. Anyhow. It was like I saw beyond the endlessness of time and space. It was like I was looking into eternity. And and it was, oh man, it was so beyond the imagination ability of the human mind. And and my whole body just started trembling and shaking and, and quaking. And I, and I get up and I go out in the living room and I started saying things and speaking things out of my mouth that were really like Paul said he knew someone that had gone up into the third heaven and he heard things that were unlawful and I'm uh, you can't speak them on earth and, and I was saying these things and and they were sitting there covering their ears and saying stop talking shut up they couldn't bear to hear these things that I was describing about creation and eternity and heaven and God and stuff and, and it was just too much for human ears to bear I couldn't bear it I was trembling and quaking and shaking and I go back in that room and I'm laying in the bed and I'm like oh god I can't go back to like I did you know in the 70s and ask you to go away back when the power was coming on me back then I said oh god I can't make that mistake again because in 82 when I de dedicated to follow the Lord Spirit revealed to me he said this is your last time you can't be backsliding anymore if you do the devil's gonna just take you out of this world not that I would go to hell but he would say that'd be the you know that would be the end of it so I knew certain things at this time by an 82 and and uh, so anyhow that it was just so powerful and, I, and, and I'm laying there and I'm and I'm saying I can't do it like I can't be like that and ask you to go away I need to do something different this time well it's trembling and my like the prophet said I'm I'm ruined and I'm undone for I live around unclean people with unclean lips and all this stuff you know he was in the presence of God and I was in the presence of God and it was you know the Bible says it's a terrible thing to come into the presence of the living God but it, it's it's something you don't want to avoid because you want to go forward with it and God bless God blessed me and I re, and the Lord showed me reminded me what I've already read he knew I was ready he allowed me this to happen now at that time in 82 because I knew that Jesus said I'll give you another comforter and I didn't know really what that meant in in those words but I knew I, the word comfort meant something to me at that time because I was really out of comfort and I said Lord give me your comforter I really need your comforter and then I just fell asleep and and I was messed in my mind for a couple I remember that was like a Saturday or a Sunday 
I think it was a Sunday. And, uh, and then next day at work, I'm looking at the uh, the guy who was in charge of a bunch of us laborers at Omni, and and uh, I I couldn't really I was like my mind was like in a real messed up frame because of what I saw, and I'd look at his face and then I kind of like inch down and inch down and inch down and it was like uh, everything was all jerky and jerky and jolty, and and I and someone said you don't want to you're not going to let him look at you like that. And, and I t talked to the man privately, and I said, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or weird. And I told him what happened to me. And I said, but God told me it'd be all right, that, you know, in a few days, things would cool off, mellow out, and I'd be all right. And I was. <clears throat> so, there's nothing impossible with God and nothing impossible with them that believe, trust, and obey. There's no other way. And, and uh, Trust in the completed work of Christ. He did everything through the birth, life, and death, and resurrection, and sending down the Holy Spirit, and preserving His Holy Word for all these years. He's done everything that we need in this world, and that's what we need. We need all that stuff. I pray that God bless everybody, and God keep everybody, and there's... and, and uh, I don't really need to make a bunch more about it, I guess. I, I just say that, you know, because there's, there's more. <laughs> I remember there was this quote about uh, this uh, thing from uh, Shakespeare or with Horatio. There's more, you know, I don't know, <laughs> about heaven and hell than whatever. I don't remember exactly the quote. You we, you look it up if you want. And, and uh, so anyhow. I just shared, I wanted to share this with you to share some of this stuff in my life and I could share a whole lot more because God has preserved me through accidents and injuries and troubles. I mean, you know, when I was a little boy on Medway Street, my dad aimed a bow and arrow at me and he's like, what's the matter? Don't you trust me? And I'm like, dad, you know, didn't cut it out. And, I, and right at the right moment, I jumped to the side and just when I did, he slipped and the arrow shot into the wall and I'm like, Shh, thanks dad. I mean, all through my life, God has protected me and preserved me, even from the big truck wreck, 70,000 pounds uh, in the concrete mixer in 19, uh, 2018, turned upside down completely and crushed me, uh, split my head up and broke all these bones all through my body, crushed my chest and through the front, crushed parts of my spine, and I was hanging by my legs upside down for an hour while they are cutting me out, and, you know, and then... Uh, month whatever later I'm walking into the therapy place and they were surprised after seeing all this information of what happened they were surprised to see me just walking in there and and uh, God is good you know there's just pray and trust like in the Old Testament when it says if you uh, if you're willing and obedient but you look up those words the word obedient doesn't mean what you're doing it means that consent from your heart to comply. It's just like saying yes. You know, saying yes is, is actually the perfect repentance. Some people think you have to have all this sorrow and repentance and all this whatever. Whatever, you know, floats your boat. But know that repentance can be just as simply as you're, you were going your way and now you decide to go God's way. Just say yes, Lord. Hallelujah.